Hi, I'm Don Dawson. Ergonomic hazards have a way of sneaking up on you in a workplace. Today, we'll be looking at how you can recognize and avoid them ahead of time. There are thousands of different types of industrial jobs, but they all have something in common. Each one makes physical demands on the person who performs it. Over time, these stresses and strains can cause severe, even disabling injuries. Ergonomics is the study of how workers can avoid these stresses so they can work more comfortably, more productively, and more safely. In this program, we'll discuss ergonomic hazards that can be encountered in industrial environments and look at the equipment and procedures you can use to protect yourself from them. A good way to understand ergonomics is to think of our body as a mechanical system. Our bones provide the supporting framework. They are linked by ligaments, muscles, and tendons that hold the bones together and make them move. Nerves are woven throughout the system to deliver information to and from the brain and provide us with our sense of touch. This setup works very well, but like any mechanical system, things can go wrong. In fact, the ergonomic hazards that we encounter in our work can create a number of problems, such as repeating the same motion over and over again without rest, working in awkward or extreme positions, and using excessive force. All of these things can cause our joints to get sore from overuse, muscles, ligaments, and tendons to be bruised, strained, and torn, and nerves to be pinched and squeezed. And the more effort you have to use while you're making repetitive motions or working in awkward positions, the more damage it can cause. While some of these symptoms may seem to be minor inconveniences at the time, over the long term, these malfunctions can lead to painful and even disabling injuries. This can occur throughout the body, but especially in the hand and wrist, arm and shoulder, and neck and back. Over time, this can lead to conditions such as carpal tunnel syndrome, chronic lower back pain, repetitive motion syndrome, and tendonitis. Fortunately, you can learn to recognize ergonomic hazards in advance and use ergonomically safe practices and equipment to protect yourself before they cause any damage. Positions that place the least strain on your body are called neutral positions. Your hand and wrist are in a neutral position when your wrist is straight, as if you were shaking hands, which lets you work most comfortably and safely. Working with your wrist in other positions can be very stressful and can eventually lead to injuries. Potentially harmful wrist positions include extension, bending your wrist up and back, Try it, you can feel the stress. Flexion, bending the wrist down. Deviation, bending your wrist to either side. Supination, turning the palm up by rotating your wrist. And pronation, turning the palm down. You should take care to limit how often you make these motions, especially when you're using tools. Speaking of tools, hand and power tools come in all shapes and sizes. Thinking ergonomically can help you choose the ones that will help to protect your hands and wrists from injury. For example, you should pay attention to the design of the handles. They should be at least as long as the widest part of your hand. Avoid handles with sharp edges or finger grips. 
Plain round ones put less stress on your hands. And always select tools with handles that will allow you to keep your wrist straight as you use them. Tools that don't fit you can increase the strain on your wrist and lead to pain and injury over time. So try any tools out before you use them and make sure they work for you. Some power tools transfer a lot of vibration to your hands when they're operating. Over time, the shaking can irritate, even injure your hands, wrists, and arms. To protect your hands when you're using these tools, you should limit the amount of time you work with them, avoid forcing them, let the tools do the work, and wear gloves that are designed to absorb as much vibration as possible. When ergonomic problems affect the arm and shoulder, it can lead to conditions such as tendonitis and bursitis. You can prevent these problems by avoiding certain hazardous motions while you work, such as extension, reaching backwards, abduction, raising your arm out to the side, and adduction, reaching across the body. Instead, Work with your upper arms at your sides, with your elbows bent about 90 degrees, so your forearms and hands are in front of you. This neutral position will put the least amount of stress on your body. To achieve this 90 degree hand-elbow-arm angle, you can adjust yourself or the environment where you're working. For example, if you're in a chair, raise or lower it as necessary. If you're working at a bench or table, raise or lower it. If your work surface is not adjustable, you can still lower it by standing on some type of platform, or raise whatever it is you're working on by placing it on a pad or stand. Where you store tools and materials in your work area is important as well. If you keep them somewhere off to the side or behind you, you'll have to make stressful movements to reach them. You can avoid this by storing the things you use as close to directly in front of you as possible, so you can reach them more easily and safely. It also helps to take mini breaks throughout the day to stretch and loosen tight muscles. And if you find yourself straining to overpower a stuck or heavy object, remember that using excessive force can make any type of motion more hazardous. Stop what you're doing before you hurt yourself and find a way to get the job done stress-free. Your neck and back provide strength and support to your head and upper body while allowing you to move flexibly. But they're complicated structures and putting too much stress on them can lead to trouble. To protect your neck, avoid motions such as flexing or extending it by moving your head forward and back, or making side-to-side -side motions. To do this, you may have to make some adjustments, such as repositioning your computer screen or altering your workstation so you can see without straining. Just remember, the goal is to keep your head and neck upright and in a neutral position. Good ergonomics is important for the back as well. Believe it or not, we place significant strain on our back just by sitting or standing. If you sit while you work, you can reduce the strain on your back by making sure the lower portion or lumbar region is firmly supported by the back of your chair. Some chairs don't provide as much lumbar support as others, so you may find it helpful to place a pillow or rolled up towel behind your lower back. Another way to prevent back strain while you're sitting is to make sure your feet are firmly supported, either on the floor or by a footrest or other platform, and your knees should be slightly higher than your hips. Ergonomics can help you work more safely while you're standing too. Adjust your workspace so that you can stand straight without bending at the waist or slouching. To prevent tiring out your lower back, place a footrest on the floor 
and stand with one foot on it at a time. Remember to switch the foot that you're raising every now and then. Anti-fatigue mats and cushioned insoles can help to keep you comfortable when you're standing for long periods as well. Using proper lifting procedures is especially important whether you are on or off the job. It can do a lot to prevent straining or otherwise injuring your back. More than one million back injuries occur in U.S. workplaces every year. And most of them occur because people lift things the wrong way. The most common mistake we make is bending at the waist while we're making a lift. When you lift something, your back not only has to carry the weight of your upper body, it has to carry the weight of what you're lifting as well. When you bend at the waist, it focuses this strain on your lower back and multiplies the weight by a factor of 10. So if your upper body weighs 100 pounds, bending at the waist places 1,000 pounds of pressure on the lumbar portion of your spine. If you're lifting a 25 pound object, that adds another 250 pounds for a total of 1,250 pounds your back has to support. That much stress is dangerous. So it's important to keep your back straight and think before you lift. Examine the load. If it's too heavy, bulky, or unbalanced for you to handle alone, get some help. Ask a coworker for assistance or use a cart or a dolly. If you decide you can make the lift by yourself, doing it safely is not complicated. First, get close to the object. Lower yourself by bending at the knees. Remember, don't bend at the waist. Get a good grip on the sides of the object. Lift slowly with your legs with the load against your body. And keep your back straight. If you need to change direction while carrying the load, don't turn your upper body. Change direction with your feet instead. Walk through the turn to avoid twisting your back. When it's time to offload what you're carrying, simply reverse the process. Remember to keep your back straight and bend at the knees. When you're making a team lift with a coworker, you need to work in unison. One person should lead the lift by counting one, two, three, lift. Then do the same when you're offloading. As we've seen, ergonomic hazards can be a real challenge on the job, but you can meet the challenge and avoid injury by following safe work practices and using the appropriate equipment. Let's review. Ergonomic hazards place stresses and strains on your body that can cause severe, sometimes debilitating injuries. You can reduce the stress on your body by maintaining neutral positions. Whether you're sitting or standing, you should set up your workplace to fit you. Whatever your position, make sure your feet and lower back are firmly supported. Avoid using excessive force and always follow safe lifting procedures. Now that you know what types of ergonomic hazards to look out for and what to do to avoid them, you can go home pain-free every day.